Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In the last video, we talked about the activity stack and how we can navigate between different activities and send data along the way with the help of the intent. In this video, we are going to focus more on the different things that we can create with the intent class. So we have defined the intent as an object that let us communicate between different components within the same application or other applications. You can also use to represent your intention to do or to perform a certain action on the data that you are having. And generally the intent is made of two types. And so far we have been using only one type which is the explicit intent. So explicit intents are used to start a specific activity within the same application or within another application by specifying the package name of the target application. And we have seen how we specified the target activity that we wanted to launch to like the second activity or the third activity unlike the second type of the intent which is the implicit intent which is used to request an action from another app or another app component that can handle the request without specifying the target so you don't specify the target explicitly but you just let the android system handle the request and show you or show the user the applications that are suitable for this action or the applications that can handle this action and in this video we are going to create a couple of examples on how we can use the intent to do multiple actions within the android system so here within our main activity i have just made some minor modifications for the button i changed the name of the button with the id of the button or the text of the button and the id of the button and here what I want to create is whenever I click on the button I want to perform some actions from the intent class. I'll perform those actions with an implicit intent. So here let's add a click listener to our button. Sit on click listener and here we will create an instance of the intent class. Intent is equal to the intent and here within the constructor you can see the overloads of the constructor. We used the package context class constructor before where we set the target class or the target component explicitly here instead of this we will use the action constructor which takes an action that we can specify from the intent class and here what we want to do is whenever we click on this button we want to launch a web browser and we will also specify which uri exactly that we want to browse so to launch a web browser you have to add the action view and then we will pass the uri and you can do this by referring to the data property from the intent and here the data property takes a uri within its arguments so we cannot pass a string directly what we can do is we can use the uri class and then the parse static function from the class and within the function here we can pass our uri so here i will pass the documentations or developer.android.com uri and finally we will just call start activity again pass the intent and now once we launch the application the android system will show us a sheet or a bottom sheet that contains a list of the applications that can handle this action which is the view action so let's run to see the result so here once we click on the do action you can see here the list of the desired applications or the applications that can handle this request and here you'll let the user choose their preferred application so here for example let's just open edge for example or chrome and you can see here it opens the link or the uri that we passed to the intent now alternatively you can add a title to the bottom sheet which contains the applications so the user can read the title and know what is the next step that they should do and for this we'll create a chooser which just represent the bottom sheet and it comes from the intent class so the chooser is just a static function that traps around the actual intent or your intent and it also returns an intent so as you can see here it takes an intent so we will pass our intent and for the title we will for example pass choose your preferred application now since this create chooser here returns an intent we will save it within a variable or we'll store it within a variable called i and instead of passing our actual intent we will pass the wrapper intent which is the i in this case now let's run to see the result 
Now you can see here once you click on the do action button, the sheet will appear and here you can see your title, choose your preferred application. Now the user can choose any application and it will launch the application with the URI given to the intent. Now you can also use the intent to send emails or pass the data of the emails along the way. So here instead of specifying the action as action view, we will change it to action send to. And once you launch this intent, the Android system will know that you want to send an email as this action is already registered to send emails or messages. Now next, what we want to do within the data here is that we want to specify the intended email address that we want to send this message to. So here, instead of this, we will first specify that we want to send an email, not a message, with mail to string. Then we will add our email address or the target email address. So say for example, test at test.com. Now next we can put some extras and we have seen the extras in the last video where we can pass extra information to this intent. Now here we will call the intent dot put extra and now we need a key and a value. So there are already registered keys within the intent that the Android system uses to know the type of extras exactly that you are passing to the intent which performs the mail to or the action sent to for emails. So here again the keys come from the intent class so here what we want to pass is extra subject to specify the subject so this is my subject next what we want to specify is the body of the email so intent dot put extra intent extra text which just represents the body of our email now let's add the text of the body so this is our body and finally we'll have the same chooser or you could simply just pass the intent directly to the start intent so we will run to see the result you can see here if you click on the do action it will open the email application with the recipient already added to the list test at test.com and the subject already specified along with the body as well now in this case the Android system didn't launch the chooser or didn't launch the sheet of the applications because we only have one application which is the Gmail but if we have multiple applications that can handle the action sent to then it will launch the chooser and let the user choose their preferred application to perform this action. Now let's learn how we can dial a number or launch the dialing application from our own application. So here the action to dial a number is called action dial. And then you guessed it we have to specify the extras or the data that we want to dial so we don't need any extras for now what we need is the data here so instead of mail to what we want to add is tell and then the number so for example one two three four five six seven eight nine and now if we run you can see once we click on the do action button we will launch the dialing application where we can dial a number directly from our application. So do action launches the dialing application or the phone application and here you can simply just dial the number. Now lastly let's see how we can share a text between different applications or between different components. So here we have a text within our application that we want to send to external applications. So here for example let's just see that you get this text from an edit text or from the internet or from the database or whatsoever and then you want to share this piece of text with other applications. So here I'm just going to create this variable called text. It will just have this is a sample text and here we want to share this text with other applications. So the action to share text or share any piece of information is the action sent. And here we will not specify any data what we want to specify is the type of data that we are sharing which is in this case a text so use the intent intent dot type and here you can specify that you are sharing a plain text so this is how you specify the type of the text that you are sharing now after specifying the type we have to specify the extra text that we want to share so what we want to share is text so intent.extra put extra intent.extra text 
just similar to what we did before with the email and here we will pass our text. Now we will run and here you can see once you click on the do actions or do action button it will show us the possible applications that can handle our action here. So do actions, you can see it also showed your contacts or the contacts that you texted before uh, from the messages app or other apps like WhatsApp or Instagram or so whatsoever. Here we will for example choose the messages app and I will use this conversation and then you can see this is a sample text you can send it to the intended recipient. Well there's a lot of possible things that you can create with the intent it just depends on your use cases and your intentions or the features that you want to add or put within your own applications. However I will leave links to the description below for everything or every, anything that you want to know more about the intent and the different actions that you can perform with the intent. I just wanted to show you how we can use an implicit intent instead of specifying an explicit intent that has an explicit target or, or only one target that can handle the intent. This is how you would usually create your explicit intents. Now have you ever wondered how these applications appear? I mean we have a lot of applications that can appear within the sheet that can handle the request but how can the Android system exactly determine that these applications can handle your type of intent or your action that your intent has? Well if you think about it, it all happens within the Android manifest file as the Android manifest file holds the information that this application has or can perform along with extra metadata about your own application. So each of these applications that showed within the sheet have already specified within the Android manifest that they can handle some types of these intents or some types of the actions that we pass to the intent. And all of this could happen with the help of the intent filter. And we have already seen it before but we didn't really talk about it. So if you open the Android manifest file you can see here under your main activity we have an intent filter specified within our main activity or within the tag of our main activity. And here within the intent filter it has two extra tags which is the action and the category. So what happens here is within the action you can see here it says that android intent.action.main and this specifies that this activity or the main activity here should be the main activity or the main entry point to our application. Now the second one which is the category it says that this activity should be listed within the launcher application within the android system as an entry point to the app. So this is usually how the entry point of our application is determined. So you can have different intent filters set for different activities but only one activity can be the main entry point of the app. And this is the reason why we didn't add this intent filter to other activities. Now how could these applications determine what type of intents that they can handle? Well if you look within the intent filter here we have the action. An action here is similar to the action that we specified within the intent constructor. This element specifies the action or the intent that an app component can handle. And here we are saying that this activity should handle the main action. So if you for example add an intent filter with an action view to another activity, once someone shares something from an app or someone shares some URI from another app, then your activity or your application will be added to the bottom sheet or the chooser sheet where the user can choose their preferred application. Now next coming to the category here and this element specifies the category or type of intent that an app component can handle. So we have different types of intent and we also have different categories of intent. So you can specify if your activity or your application can handle this particular type of intent. We also have another element which is called the data and with the help of this element here you can use it to specify the type of data that your component can handle. So for example before we added developer.android.com to the data of the intent and all the applications or all the browsers that have showed within the bottom sheet or that have showed within the intent chooser have already specified that they can handle these URIs with, with the help of the data element within the intent filter. Now let's make our application handle the intents of the action view type. 
So here within the manifest, I will add this intent action or the intent filter to our second activity. So we don't have any intent that launches our second activity, but we'll launch our second activity from the intent filter. So here, instead of just adding the adding the closing tag, we'll open the body of the activity tag and we will add our intent filter. So to make this activity ready to handle intent of type action view, we will add the action element and then we will specify the action view. So open the intent filter and here we will add the action. Android name is going to be action view. Now next we have to specify the category of this action or of this intent. So the category will be browsable because we want to browse the internet and this category also will let your application launch from a web browser. If the user for example clicked a URL within a web browser and this URL your application can handle, then the web browser will launch your application to handle the action of the intent. Now next we have to specify the default or the action default with the name default. And the default here indicates that the activity should be considered a default handler for the action view. Now finally once you added all the now finally, once you added all the actions and categories of your intent filter, you have to add the metadata to specify the data types that the activity can handle. And this is also compulsory if you are adding the action view along with other categories as well. So here we'll add the data and within the data we will specify the path, the scheme and the host that the activity can handle. Well, all of these are optional, but the scheme here must be added. So for the scheme, I will add the HTTP and the HTTPS as well. Now, once you added your intent filter, you have to specify the exported attribute that we saw before, but we didn't really talk about it to the activity and set it to true. So the exported will let your application available for other applications to launch. And this is crucial, especially when you want your app to be shown to the user to choose from within the chooser list. So here add exported and set it to true. And this will make your activity available for external use. Now once we are done we will go to the main activity and you can see here still the same action view, the URI and the chooser and then we started the activity. Now let's go to the second activity to handle this response or handle this result. So we know that every activity has an intent property that started this particular activity. So we can use this intent or this property to get the data passed to the intent. So here we are going to get the same data passed from our intent within the main activity, intent.data. And here the second activity could be launched without specifying any data and in this case the data could be null. So we will first check if the data is not equal to null and then we will get the actual data from the data variable right here. So the first thing that I want to get is the host. So host equal to data dot host and then we want to get the scheme. So val scheme data dot scheme. And lastly, what we want to get is the path if the user specified any additional path to the scheme and the host. So path equals to data dot scheme. Now finally, we want to combine these parts to create the whole URL. So val URL equal to first the scheme colon for slash and then the host. And finally, we will put the path. Now we create a toast to show the whole URL that we have got from the intent. Now let's run to see how this goes. So here within our main activity, click on do actions. You can see our activity now or our application now is within the chooser list. You can click on my first project and it will launch your second activity with a toast message showing the URL passed from the main activity. So this is how external applications can handle other actions sent from your applications or any other applications. And all of this happen with the help of the intent class and the intent filter that you specify within the Android manifest file. So that was it for this video. 
Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.